Hi, welcome to Rajal Nai. In today's video, I'm going to discuss about uh, data migration. As we all know, whenever being a business analyst majorly to work in any of the domain, either irrespective of the domains, either it can be of healthcare, it can be insurance, it can be financial services, it can be banking of anything. As part of the business activities, as well as the process to manage with, organizations uses different, different applications. So if you take an example for healthcare organizations to manage their core administrative uh, activities, including claims and all, they use different, different applications like FaceIt, QNext, HealthEdge, etc. At the same time, whenever people use this in uh, insurance, especially into property and casualty insurance, they use different applications like uh, Duck Creek, Guideware, One Shield, right? So different, different applications they will be using. When it comes to banking, of course, there are different, different uh, core banking applications will be used or it can be CRM, ERP, right? So different applications to manage the business activities organization uses. As in this part of these applications they use, there are some situations organizations come across where they have to migrate their data to the new application. Let's say an organization, as an example I'm taking, for example, a healthcare organization, in the healthcare sector is using a legacy application, a legacy mainframe applications to manage their activities. Now, to enhance their business process, to make it more efficient in terms of accuracy of the deliverables, assume that they want to migrate to facets. So when there is a migration of an application from legacy systems to the new application when they are migrating. It's not only about migration of the project, but majorly in this migration, data migration plays a vital and important role because there is a large amount of data which is in the servers which was located. So this migration we have to do because the file formats can be of anything. Either it can be in XML, it can be JSON. Right. So different, different formats of files are available. At the same time, even whatever uh, the files, if it, especially in terms of the healthcare I'm talking about, right, there can be of EDI file formats, right? So all these will be available, like right? data exchange formats, right? So all these formats will be available. So whenever these formats are available, whatever the huge amount of data, wherein data migration plays a vital and important role for any of the projects. So in this video, I'm going to explain you about this data migration process, what exactly this data migration process will be majorly of, right? So what are the uh, benefits of uh, the migration process, data migration process, and for what reason and what was the benefit behind uh, going towards that, right? So because benefits of data migration will be for these reasons, because any organization, I am not specifying any organization or a domain here, because this is a generalized thing, which is required for the irrespective of the technology, irrespective of the domain, I am specifying this. When we talk about the benefits, it is to maximize the value of any application. This is the first uh, uh, benefit, right? So because any application, if you want to maximize the value for that particular application, data migration is required. At the same time, if you want to have a better effective decision making, even for that purpose, data migration is needed. At the same time, it improves the efficiency because when we are migrating the data from the legacy applications to the new applications and all, it improves automatically as in when technology has upgraded, it improves the efficiency followed by legacy legislative compliances, all that. So these are the 
benefits which normally are happens when we are going for data migration. But what are the common mistakes people do? Right? So this is not a generalized statement I am giving because when there is a migration process we do in projects, what are the common mistakes we do in general? right? So the first one is understand approach. This is required. So approach of data migration is one of the key element one has to understand, especially people who are working in the roles of a business and they should understand why and how this approach has to be taken place. So approach towards understanding over migration of the applications is one of the key factor where few people will do will do the mistakes in this grounds, right? So this is one thing we have to consider. The second was unrealistic expectations, whatever uh, the expectations do we have when there is a migration taken place? It must be realistic. It must be in reality. Right? So because there shouldn't be any unrealistic, unrealistic expectations we keep. Whatever is possible, whatever we can. And what is the practical reality that we have to understand? So this is where generally unrealistic expectations come into picture. The third one is poor scoping. Right. So because understanding the scope of the project is also one of the key and prominent element because scope we have to understand well, because if you have not understood the scope of the migration process, right? So because we never know what kind of complexity we might be arised when we are doing this migration, we need to understand what are the assumptions, dependencies, what could be the challenges, right? So how to address those. That kind of understanding and knowledge is always required. So this is where generally scoping, poor scoping, scope, understand, and, 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 and misunderstanding or not able to understand the right scope of the project. That's what generally poor scoping stands for. Next is resistance in change because change is inevitable. We have to make some changes on the application when and wherever it is needed due to the business rules or the government mandates, whatever it happens. We have to make some necessary changes, but resistance in change, the, the kind of mindset in terms of resistance in change will also uh, considered as a mistake in some occasions when we do the my data migration, all that. Now, when we want to do a data migration, what can be the what should be the approach right this is what generally one has to learn so there are different different stages the first stage is called discover stage where in this discover stage we need to understand the landscape analysis landscape analysis from the broader context which must be an uh, understanding over uh, the actual scenario of the migration what is that we want to do for that necessarily important for us to engage with different stakeholders because these stakeholders can be an internal stakeholders or it can be an external stakeholders. Engaging these stakeholders is also one of the key elements so that we will be knowing about how this process can be taken further. All this can be decided over here. Next is scoping, right? So possibility of scope, right? So discover, understanding the right scope of migration is required. That's what I said in the beginning, in the earlier slide, right? So mistakes, poor scoping is one of the mistakes which normally can, is possible to do, right? So there is a possibility. So scope of migration process should also be known to the people well in advance. Next planning and governance is what we do in this stage where how to do this migration planning, right? So what are the governance standards, policies and procedures do we require to follow commissioning, right? So all these things is what generally we need to consider when, uh, whenever uh, we want to understand about discovery phase, right? So this is the first phase where we see in data migration. When we want to migrate any projects and approaches, the first thing is about this, the data and discovery. Next was design, right? So what kind of design we want to make? What should be the approach that we have to be understood prior advance? At the same time, data mapping is also required. So how to do this data mapping? What 
existing as is as well as to be processed to be understood because data mapping is required with the old to new data old to new applications and all so the data mapping data manipulations data mapping is something essentially required so for that we need to perform gap analysis this is where generally as is and to be system come into picture so that we will be knowing about what kind of gaps we have identified either it can be a functional gap it can be a non-functional it can be security it can be of uh, any other uh, gaps and all gaps can be identified between as is and to be followed by the development so this is the second approach second stage where discovery is the first stage where design is the second one when we talk about talk about data migration approach the third one about testing where here we do the testing of the code what are the code we have written irrespective of the programming language it can be code testing will be done at the same time we have to process the testing user acceptance testing will be done followed by this performance tuning right so because application performance is the high priority accuracy and as well as performance should be on a high level mode so performance tuning is even required in testing next delivery right so we have to once the migration process is completed successfully so that has to go on live so that to the users directly so that they can use it accordingly at the same time if there any if there is any post launch support right so whenever the project was launched whenever the migration process is completed when it is on go on air go on live if there is any difficulties people have identified practical difficulties while they are working on so post launch support has to be given next possible if you want to integrate with other technologies that also has to be done in the phase of delivery so these are the different different phases we approaches we do in data migration so this is in high level view wherein for this data migration in high level view etl process knowledge over etl process is required because there may be a legacy database or mainframe related legacy legacy files mainframe publications will be there so through an etl process etl is a concept as we know extract transform and loading of data this is where generally different different etl tools will be used in the real world by us so this has to be migrated to the new database this is what generally in high level view which normally happens when we do this data migration for any of the projects right so this is all about this video this video is majorly helpful for the people who are applying for business analyst jobs or who are working as a business analyst nowadays and whoever is planning to work or whoever is about to work or who is working under data migration projects not only for them people who are applying for job opportunities as a ba as far as their uh, uh, job description whatever they have received to attend the interviews and all so some projects uh, and the customer requirements will be through data migration required because people will ask you do you have any experience in data migration process projects or not right so people will ask you these kind of questions where uh, this video is more helpful and i'm going to provide uh, an exclusive training on these areas because data migration related stuff nowadays specifically i'm doing this because uh, i'm getting a lot of inquiries so that i'm doing this data migration especially uh, detailed uh, part of this training coaching i'm giving for the people especially on uh, uh, jd based job description based because i'm getting some inquiries on job description related stuff uh, there will be a job description where people want some coaching on the job description right that's how it is right so this this uh, that is that is one thing and data migration this is how generally the process of data migration is i hope you got an idea i think uh, this is more helpful to you while you are preparing for your interviews or whenever you are applying for jobs or when you are working while you are working or about to work this is all about this if you have any questions if you have any queries in regard to that please reach out to the contact details which will be posted in below to this video 
Thank you.